Ready? Should we go? All yeah. Right. Let's get started. So, thanks for joining us. We are delighted to have Monica Barnett, um, fashion guru, and her program is called Blueprint for Style. We thought it's a really great way to kick off our CDO events, um, our virtual events of the fall semester, um, especially because everything we're doing is virtual. And so it's good to be confident in knowing when you're making connections or having job interviews, you're going to look and feel your best so you can do your best. Um, Laura Friedman is our Director of um, Career Counseling and Professional Development, and maybe it's the opposite, professional development and career counseling, it's one <laughs> or the other. <laughs> she does it all. Um, and so this you know, ties in nicely with professional development and professional growth. So she's gonna go ahead and give a little intro on how this, um, this panel will go. Yeah, so hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, so we also have Keith Dye from Student Services and the Career Development Office on, and he's uh, really helping us out on the tech side of things. Um, speaking of tech side of things, a few things. Um, so we are gonna use the chat function for those of you who are not driving um, for engagement during the session. And then any questions that you have at any point during the presentation or at the end, please type into the Q&A and then all of that stuff will be covered at the end. Um, also, um, if anybody has any like tech questions during the presentation, um, I would say, you know, privately chat to myself um, or Keith Dye. Um, because this is a webinar, you should only see um, four video boxes and you could always uh, pin Monica's so that you just view hers um, and she'll be sharing her screen. So ideally you would only see her screen and then you know, the chat and, and Q&A boxes. If anything is amiss, uh, reach out, let me know. We'll see if we can get that figured out for you. Um, so as Mary Beth said, we are so excited to have Monica Barnett here uh, to talk about virtual interviewing, a winning strategy, and to kick off your professional growth this year. Ms. Barnett has over 13 years of styling and branding experience and has been featured on many stages around the world, but the focus is always on the importance and power of the first impression. Across her distinguished career as a wardrobe stylist, she's had the privilege to partner with major corporations to fine tune their employees' style and brand, and had the opportunity to work with corporate executives, some of America's top graduate programs, politicos, and world-class athletes. I think, Monica, we need some stories from you later. Um, the goal is always to develop a more intentional approach of curating one's outward appearance to align with one's lifestyle and aspirations. She started styling because she wanted people to feel good, and one of the easiest ways to feel good is to look great. So without further ado, Monica, I will hand things over to you. Thank you so much. Um, so with that, let me make sure that I am, you can see the screen. Can everyone see the screen? Excellent. As Laura said, and as Mary Beth stated, um, I want this to be interactive. We have at this point a little under 60 minutes, and I do want to make sure you're engaged. I don't want you off kind of in the middle doing your Pilates routine or, you know, kind of in part in, part out. So throughout the presentation, I'm going to be asking you to type into the chat. So please make sure that you type into the chat as we are going and it will make this go much, much smoother. I need to pull up the chat. All right, there we go. And with that, <clears throat> I'm gonna get started. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We are gonna be talking today about virtual interviewing, a winning strategy. This is important because as we move and given where we are in today's time, we are moving to do more stuff online and virtually. And there are a couple of pointers that will help all of you um, put your best foot forward and make the best first impression um, as you think about interviewing, as you think about looking at jobs, uh, internships, or even stuff locally or internally. So first, let me kick us off with a little bit about me. I did start Blueprint for Style at this point about 12 years ago, actually about 13 years ago. And I started doing individual styling, but at this point it's grown into doing corporate seminars, working with um, schools 
all across the country, but also um, as of late, um, creating and starting an online style school. So that's pretty cool. I'm a contributor to NBC's Know Your Value initiative, which focuses on helping women understand their value and power and move up in the corporate ladder or the corporate structure, as well as Real Simple and a couple more. I am a published author with a second book due out in September. So if you think that I'm a, sound a little bit crazy at some point, it's probably just me reverting because I'm in the hot throes of a uh, copy editing. I have worked with a number of business, business schools, universities throughout the country, as well as major corporations like Marriott, Comcast, Time, and a couple of others. As of 2020, I want to say we have, as a company, Blueprint for Style, reached out to and engaged with about 15% of US law schools to conduct similar seminars. I let Mary Beth and uh, Laura know, though, that, that you guys are the inaugural, the first. Um, so that's always fun. And again, I'm really hoping to be engaging. As much as I love fashion and I love shopping, sometimes I am equally passionate and quite frankly, a little more focused on how to make people feel great about themselves. All right? All right. So if you hear me and you understand, type yes or why into the chat bar. Type why or yes into the chat. Everyone except Valera. Everyone except Valera, because Valera, I think, is driving. So I only got like one or two, so it's okay. There we go. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. And with that, I can keep going. So Here's, let me give a little bit about what I know. Here's what I do know. I know that about 70% of the folks across the law school that received a survey were unsure or not prepared for virtual interviewing. And that can mean everything from, I have no idea what to say, I have no idea what to dress, I have no idea how to look, but at some way or some way you were unsure, some way you were unsure or unclear about virtual interviewing. I know that recruiters are focused very heavily on your facial expressions and your engagement beyond the initial, I call it savviness of the setup of the virtual interview. And the savviness and the setup of the virtual interview are things like, did you respond via email? Did you have trouble clicking into the Zoom call? Did you not reply all or reply to one person? Beyond that, a lot of recruiters are focused on that eye-to-eye -eye contact, that visual and um, facial expressions. I know that almost all of you want to know how to project authenticity and competence on screen. It is much harder. Things, you have a, a screen about yay big, that's it, in which to portray confidence and which to portray confidence. Um, so we're going to walk through some of that and hopefully give you a couple of pointers that will at least get you on the good foot when it comes to that. In response to COVID-19, what I do know is that many companies, a number of companies, have moved to virtual interviews and online hiring processes. And I know that in addition, I mean, when we think about remote working, you've got to look at remote working is a new way of life. It's the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks, Microsoft. A lot of companies have decided that they are now moving to uh, remote work in addition to virtual interviews and online hiring processes. And I also know that at least half of you are interested in law firms of varying sizes. Um, and that matters to me because law firms have very different interviewing processes and look for different things than government-based opportunities, than nonprofits, and so on and such. So that's just a little bit about what I know, but it is also going to color my presentation today. All right? If you're with me, say yes. If you're with me, say yes, yes, yes. All right, I got Catherine saying yes. I've got, I think it's Suyin saying yes. And so I appreciate that. Thank you. Let's me know you're engaged. Today we're going to talk about and we're going to agree on what you need for virtual interviewing. If you can agree to that, type the word agree. It's five letters, but you can do it. Do you agree that we're going to talk about 
what you need for virtual interviewing. All right, people, let's go. Not only that, we're gonna list the clothing essentials. Type the word clothing. Clothing is so important here because you need to be dressed, right? Um, not just, all right, I like it, stay with me. We're gonna detail makeup and grooming needs. And when I say makeup and grooming needs, that's important because from makeup is for the ladies, grooming is for the gentlemen. It looks and it feels very, very different, okay? Stay with me and type in workspace. We're gonna outline workspace, background, environment requirements. Workspace, people, workspace is important. This isn't just about what's on your resume. It's about what's behind you and what's going on um, as you are doing your interview. In addition to workspace, we're gonna outline some intangibles. Projecting confidence on screen, creating authenticity, making a connection, engaging, relieving someone and providing them with a little bit of personality. Nobody wants an automaton. Um, so it's about how do we give them personality um, as well as confidence. If you're still with me, type the word details because details, and we're gonna discuss some of the finer details around eye contact. How do you do eye contact when you are looking in the screen? How do you do timekeeping? How do you keep from sweating bullets? Um, those are real concerns. They are real, hiccups that we can overcome. So details, they count. Devil's in the details. So we're gonna start first by talking about virtual interviewing needs. Are you all ready? If you are ready, say ready. See, Monica, let's go, let's get it. All right, I'm, I got one ready. So I feel like, okay, so I got a couple, thank you. I got a couple people that are ready. And with ready, that means that I can get going. Virtual interviewing needs. I have divided your virtual interviewing needs into before, during, and after. Before the game even begins, when we talk about virtual interviewing needs, there are a couple of things that I need you all to know and to make sure that you are doing to put your best foot forward. I need you to remember to confirm your interview time and your details, to send an email with an error-free resume at this point, there is no reason for you to have a typo on anything that goes out, whether an email or a resume. Nail this, error-free resume. If you have to, give it to somebody else to look to. I like the idea of doing a professional but personality-packed thank you and a confirmation at least a couple days prior to your email, um, to your interview. Because again, what it says is number one, you're on it. Number two, that you have just general decorum. And number three, it just confirms the details. If something is switched, if something is changed, if the situation is different, it makes sure, it's every, it makes sure everyone's on the same page. And then the last thing I need you to remember, type the word sales into chat. Type the word sales, because guess what? This is a sales call. 100% this is a sales call that you are going to conduct when we talk about a virtual interviewing. What are you selling? Hmm, you're selling yourself. You're selling beyond what your resume says, you are selling your ability to work with them, your ability to adjust to today's environment, knock it out the box online and virtually, and still connect with them. You are selling your ability to be a people person, your ability to quickly learn and adapt and grow in their environment. 100% what I need you to know that guess what? This is a sales call, got it? Keep going, stay with me if we're talking about interviewing, virtual interviewing needs, there are three things I need you to project. I need you to project professionalism and polish. I need you to project personality. I didn't want to put in competence because it doesn't have a P and that was ruining my whole alliteration gig, um, but it's necessary. So during your interview, you need to be projecting professionalism and polish in the way you look. You need to be projecting personality in the way that you're engaging in your office and authenticity with that little dot right there at the top of your laptop. And you need to be projecting competence, which is, of course, backing up what's on your resume, right? And then afterwards, oh my God, still so important how you close this out and how you bring this home. It's not just how you swing, it's the follow through on your swing, right? That tells us which direction the ball actually goes in. 
you do need to send a thank you email. Handwritten notes are still super nice. The day of pony mail is not quite gone. The post office is still working um, and it may be late, but it's always nice to think about doing a handwritten note, but at minimum, an email that says thank you for your time. You're always going to ask before the interview is over and before anyone walks out, are there any outstanding questions that I need to answer that you feel I haven't answered? You want to make sure that you wrap up and close that call because what is it? It's a sales call. Type the word sales. It is a sales call that you're conducting. Remember, for that sales call, you wanna make sure that you've given them everything they need to make a positive decision. You're gonna confirm your next steps and I remind you, please, 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 type that little, tap on that little red, leave the meeting before you do your happy dance. Um, doing your happy dance real time um, may interject personality, but I don't know, maybe a little over the top. Are you with me? Is everyone with me with a yes? All right, we've got a, got a couple yeses. All right, stay with me. I like it, Lucas, Catherine. I got Laura, I've got folks staying with me. So we talked about and what we said, what we needed from the virtual interviewing needs. Now I'm gonna get to some of the meat, some more of the meat. This is your clothing must have. You guys, this one is so easy and it's, yeah, I'll just say it's easy and then I'll tell you why. First of all, the clothing needs that I'm, gonna give, that I'm about to give you assumes that you have researched the company environment, that the policies align with your values and you actually want the job. Um, when you don't want the job, I can read it on your face. I can read it in your tone. Like it's a, hey, I can take it or leave it. <sighs> yes, I'm here. I definitely want to back up and so you're it. Ugh, okay, whatever. We don't want to project that. This assumes that you want the job and that you've researched the environment. And researching the environment is important because you need to know whether you are applying for a company that has a very casual attire so you can't show up to your interview in the suit jacket um, with a tie on or whether you're applying to the larger and more corporate of the law firms and then show up with just a polo shirt on. Bad match. Do your homework beforehand. So if you can do your homework beforehand in terms of clothing must-haves, here are the must-haves. These are short, sweet, and simple. If you want to take a pause and turn around and look in your closet and see if you have it or see if it's stacked on your chair, do it. But you need a collared shirt. You need a navy or dark gray pants or skirt. And I say navy or dark gray pants or skirt because number one, I don't, I'm not a proponent of black quite as much. Navy and dark gray read a little more upscale. They meet a little more professional. Uh, so I'm always gonna remind navy and dark gray as your bottom. I remind you to actually wear bottoms. Um, I know that it may be fun to think, oh, I'm home and they're just gonna see my face and that's just fine, let's leave it at that. But at the point in which you mistakenly have to get up or the dog runs away with your phone and you've gotta get up, um, there's a chance people may see you. So always wear pants or bottoms. Um, and I speak from experience. Shame, but yes, I speak from experience. <laughs> so please wear pants, that's, a, that's important. Earrings, ladies wear earrings. Guess what? You have this much real estate. Take advantage of that real estate. Find something that frames the face and that will help you pop. Belts, you need a belt, you need a good one. Um, standing up and tugging at something, standing up and having something that is sitting halfway on your butt, not a good look. I say have a personality piece with this much real estate to deal with. The personality piece for guys can be a nice tie, right? Something that pops, something that says, I'm a little bit fun, I'm a little bit playful, I'm a little bit rock and roll. Um, ladies, it can be your necklace. Again, two examples of personality pieces. Figure out what your personality piece is. Ladies, it could be a scarf that you have wrapped around your wrist. Um, and I would tell you to opt for a non-black blazer. Navy for the guys, for the ladies, any color. And I say non-black uh, simply because again, black on such a small screen 
reads, especially if you wear a white shirt, it reads a little more waiter than it does um, associate trying to get into a law firm. So um, navy, blazer for the guys, any color for the ladies. Pause and type the word must haves in the chat. Must haves, must haves, absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna pause for a second. I'm gonna go back up to the top and for everyone on the call, I want you to answer this question very quickly. Stay with me. In today's discussion, I listed what we were gonna conduct today, what we were gonna get through. If that covers all, most, or some, type the word that is applicable. If it covers all of what you need, awesome. If it covers most of what you think you need, type that. If it covers some of what you think you need, type that. I'm looking, I got mosts and I got sums. I got sums, I got sums. Okay, some, okay. And so for the, my sums, I'm gonna come back to you. Catherine, Michaela, MH, Fatima, I'm gonna come back to you because my expectation is that by the time we get to the Q&A section at the very end, you are going to have, and you're gonna tell me um, what your questions are, right? Because this answers some, but not all. So we've gotten through your virtual interviewing needs. We've gotten through your clothing must-haves. There are a couple of little points that I wanna make sure that you note or trade-offs. They're around colors and the length of your interview. Um, colors pop, colors resonate. I would tell you that try adding more color than not, depending on what the color is. Um, when I say color, I say stay away from prints. I don't mean prints. Prints on such a teeny screen reads very busy. So solids are always best. The other trick to remember is the length of the interview. The length of the interview generally tells you whether you're meeting with one person, ah, you know, it's 60 minutes, we'll get on, you'll answer some questions, you'll ask me some questions and we'll be done or if it's a two or a three hour interview, that's very different because it's probably means you're doing a round robin interview with multiple people. That should affect what you're wearing from the perspective that you wanna make sure you're comfortable. Two or three hours sitting, looking at a screen, talking to someone, ensuring that you're engaging with that screen is a lot. So Think about some of those trade-offs, but know that there are trade-offs in your clothing. Um, at the end of the day, remember that your goal is to project professionalism. Your goal is to project polish. Your goal is to project personality, and your goal is to project competence, right? All that is is in a package deal right here on that little screen that he or she is looking at as they are interviewing you. Clothing must-haves. So there are a couple of extra resources as we go through today, and I want you to note them, remember them, maybe screenshot them, do whatever it is that feels right to you. Um, but a couple of resources, the blog. I put the blog up there, and the blog is important because there are downloadable guides that are available there that'll give the guys, you know, your top pieces that you should own as you think about transitioning to the professional world. Only for the stylish is the newsletter. The newsletter sends you some periodic stuff around, I mean, some fun stuff, some stylish stuff, but also keeps you, thank you, Laura, also keeps you ready and engaged and thinking about, again, what's next and how to be pandemic, um, post-pandemic, perfect. Um, and then the last item is the online school. Great course on how to move from backpack to briefcase, something to consider, but again, not essential, but just extra resources, okay? Is everyone with me? I need a yes. I don't see any yeses. I only see, okay, I see a couple of yeses. All right, stay with me. We're on to makeup and grooming. I love makeup and grooming because it's so teeny. It's just this little piece, but it's so important. And you're gonna know why in just a second. Makeup and grooming. Ladies, number one, nude or clear nail polish. 
Stop for a second and remember where you are and what time period you're in. There isn't anyone that you are interviewing with right now that doesn't understand that you are in the midst of a, we're in the midst of a pandemic. It's not just you, it's the entire world. Um, and that's part of the impetus in going virtual, right? No one's expecting for you to be quaffed head to toe, but they are expecting you to put your best foot forward given the circumstances. So you don't have to run out and get your nails all done. You don't need extra uh, crazy polish. If it is extra crazy polish, remember that these fingers should always be below the screen. Fair enough. So nude or clear nail polish is really where you wanna be. I say clean nails, wash your hands beforehand. No one likes to see the dark stuff under your nails. It just says that you did this last minute and you didn't care to, again, put your best foot forward. I remind you to have a food and stain-free smile. So pause on this and you wanna know why this is important. I chuckle at this, but part of my job is to help people put their best foot forward, is to help them understand kind of the why behind um, what they do. And Crest, or Colgate, did a study. And the study said that um, people with white teeth are 60% 60, are 60 more likely to be viewed as second date worthy, happy, and competent. Pause on that, take it in. 60% more likely to be viewed as second date worthy, happy, and competent. Who doesn't want a happy and competent person working for them? Little things that you need to know. Make sure you're brushing your teeth. Make sure you haven't eaten a salad. Make sure you haven't done any strawberries beforehand when you go into your interview. Ladies, satin lipstick, avoid gloss. And I tell you to avoid gloss because I've sat on a couple, not a lot, but a number of interviews where the hair is down and gloss is really good at holding on to hair. Um, and so when you go to move the hair, the gloss just whips across your face. I get red lines, you get pink lines, you get whatever color line it is, the lipstick uh, or the gloss that you're wearing. So I tell you to avoid that. Try to do satin lipstick as your go-to or even a satin stain. I wear a stain with a little bit of liner on top of that. No chap lips. This is more for the guys. Chapstick, that's all it takes, just a little chapstick. A little Vaseline, don't lube it up, just a smidge. Rub it around, rub it in, get yourself ready. Rice paper for shine. Somebody type in shine. Somebody type in shine for me. Shine, shine is important. You have this little screen and you would be surprised that depending on how much you have moisturized your face, depending on how nervous you are and you're starting to sweat, you start to either get little beads or you have these little pockets of, uh, little pockets of shine, literally, throughout your face. Rice paper, I say especially for the guys um, because they're not gonna likely put on foundation. Ladies, you don't have to either, but rice paper. Just rice paper, those you know, important uh, foreheads, your nose and your chin typically, to just take some of the shine off, depending on what your lighting is coming in, it can be a little distracting. And the goal for any interview that you have is to get them to focus on what it is you're saying and how competent and professional you are, not that you're shining and they can't quite see you at the right angle um, where you're seated. Rice paper for shine. Subtle makeup ladies, keep it simple. I mentioned this hair away from the face. I say use antiperspirant. You sit there and you think, okay, it's just 60 minutes. I got this. In, out, done. It is amazing how much sweat your body can produce in 60 minutes. It can be nerve wracking. I speak online all the time. And by the time I am done 60 minutes in, I am still sweating profusely. It doesn't matter how many times you do this, how professional you are, 
you're gonna sweat a little bit. Use antiperspirant. Um, and then ladies, I remind you that the maximum chest exposure that you really want really has to be at the breastbone. Um, depending on where it is you put the screen, breastbone is maximum chest exposure. Is everyone with me? Gentlemen, I need you to type the word grooming. Ladies, I need you to type the word makeup. I see makeup, makeup, grooming, grooming, makeup, makeup, grooming, grooming. I only had one grooming. I missed somebody. Did somebody jump off? Did, did I lose somebody? I'm hoping I still have everybody with me. All right. We have covered at this point your virtual, we've covered your virtual interviewing needs. We've gone through your clothing. We've talked about your makeup and your grooming. But guess what? We now have to switch and talk about your actual workspace, what's going on around you, right? Because you can't necessarily do your interview sitting in a Starbucks uh, coffee shop. So number one, white or light background, something that is distraction free. Um, so you'll see people put those screensavers up, you know, the ones that are cool, the screensavers that have you on a ocean, that have you on a beach, or that have you, I don't know, climbing the Mayan ruins. Skip that for your virtual interview. You want to be distraction free. The goal here is to get them in this little bit of screen to focus on you and what you are saying. So light or white background and distraction free. Lighting that hits your face. This is, I think I'm dealing with folks, every last one of you are selfie pros, right? As a selfie pro, what's the number one thing that you need when you're taking a selfie? You need lighting, type lighting. You need awesome lighting. You know, Kim Kardashian made that Moe, that Mophie or whatever that thing is, it's lighting. It's all about putting lighting in front of your face that's projecting that gives you the glow. So I want you all to think about lighting your face, making sure it's lit, okay? Your camera should be eye level or slightly higher. Um, when your camera is not, they're gonna end up looking at the ceiling, which is not where you want them to be. You want them to be focused on you. So your camera should be at eye level or slightly higher. That's important and it's related to your chair height. For your chair height, your feet should lay flat on the ground. Forget the shoes, forget socks. Your feet have to lay flat on the ground. Depending on if you have a dedicated workspace, I happen to have a dedicated, fortunate enough to have a dedicated workspace. Depending if you're on the side of somebody's table, if you're at the kitchen table, um, depending on if you're at the dining room table, it doesn't matter where you are. If you're in your dorm room, and or in your apartment and you're, you've allocated some little space. If you have one of those chairs that swivel, they're awesome for downtime, but not for interviews. Because when your feet are up and they're not touching the ground, you're moving. That's not what we want. We need you to be looking dead on in the screen and the easiest way to know that you're doing that is to have your feet lay flat on the ground. And that helps you with your chair height. I want your resume printed next to you. You're like, okay, Monica, I already sent them my resume. Type the word resume. Type the word resume in here. It is important to have your resume near you because someone's gonna ask you about something and heaven forbid in our nervous push to get ready, there's something we forgot. You need it present. To think that they ask you about something on your resume and you're like, um, yeah, it says that, I'm not quite sure. Bad look, have your resume printed next to you. It's just a good thing to have and a good place to have. Have your phone or timer on the desk. My phone or timer sits here. We're gonna talk about that in a minute and I'll tell you why that's important. Phone or timer on the desk, sitting next to you. It doesn't have to be all in front of you. It can be a clock, but something that you can engage with and see and track what's going on in your workspace. And then the last thing I remind you is to have a fan. Fan comes back to this idea that, you know what, no matter what, at the end of the day, you are 60 minutes 
and it's 60 minutes potentially of somebody grilling you. It could be two hours of three people throwing questions at you, giving you scenarios, whatever case, whatever the case may be. A fan is going to save you. You don't want sweat dripping down. You don't want those beautiful gleaming uh, shiny spots as a result. And you certainly don't want your armpits to be showing that you're sweating or your decolletage to show that you're sweating. A fan or be in a very cool place. A low fan. It just takes a fan. You don't even need AC, just a fan. And I don't know if you all noticed, but yes, I have my fan going um, at the top of my room. It is not a warm day here in DC, but my fan is going anyway because I want to stay cool. I at least want to look cool to you all. Um, so it's very important. Is everyone with me? I need a yes or no. Are you with me? Is everyone with me? I like it. Stay with me. Stay with me. We have about 20 minutes left and I have about 10 minutes more material. So we're going to keep going through and then I'm going to open it up to Q&A. So for my people that typed in the word some or even most, start to think of your questions around the interviewing needs, around your clothing, around your workplace uh, requirements, around makeup and grooming, um, and put those into the Q&A section so that I can feel those. All right, intangibles. I love this. This is the hard stuff to me. Here's it. Have a glass of water, make it clear. And so I was joking <laughs> in prep what that clear liquid could be, but Let's make it water. And during any presentation and during any interview, take a sip. This is real. The people across on the other side understand and they get this. They understand the gravity of this. Think about it. When you go into a real live interview, people will often ask you, hey, would you like a glass of water? Would you like a cup of coffee? Something to that effect. Never say yes to coffee. Say yes to the water. So just have a glass of water and say, you know what, excellent question. Let me tell you what I think and then keep going. Take a sip of water. You will thank yourself. It clears a dry throat. No one likes that. Smile. It's hard to remember, but smile. Make it a soft smile. Um, there are studies that show you what a real smile looks like, which is engaging these little crow's feet up here. Um, and they'll tell you what a fake smile looks like, which is this. This looks like I'm here and you're torturing me. Smile, engage. Recruiters want engagement and facial expression. So I'm asking you to smile as much as possible. Do soft eye contact. So soft eye contact is looking and perhaps when you pause, <clears throat> looking away, soft eye contact. That's different from looking in the screen like this and not blinking because you are so nervous and so want to make sure that they see that you see them. This is not soft eye contact. Soft eye contact. Keep it light. You want to talk. You want to engage. You want to move around just a smidge. You want to, when someone asks you the question, tell me about yourself. What you don't want to say is, hi, I'm Monica from Washington, D.C. I like to travel on the weekends and I definitely enjoy the work that I do. Soft contact, soft eye contact reads differently. So it's, hi, I'm Monica. Great question. What is it I do? I love to travel on the weekends, although that's really hard during this time. Um, and I'm from Washington, DC. Soft contact, soft contact equals engagement and that's where you wanna be. I call this the hard stuff because it requires practice. You don't want this, but you want to soften it up. Use your words. Your words, you guys have been stockpiling words for 25 plus years. Use them. For every 60 minute interview, you should find at least two opportunities to laugh. Uh, 
the one that I think of, and I actually did an interview recently is, you know, I found out on the interview, there were five people um, in the interview. So across the screen, there were five people. It's me versus five people. And so one of the things that I said is, you know, I'm Monica and you know, funny thing is I get nervous at doing one-on-one -on -one interviews. And I said, that's so lucky today that it's one on five. It's so much better, so thank you. It's just a quick way to get people to pause and to lighten up and it shows that you have personality. For every 60 minute interview, find and take an opportunity to laugh and engage. Have at least three questions written out to ask. Three is always kind of the perfect number when we talk about, you know, you talking about accomplishments or anything else. Three is usually the right number. Have them written down. In a nervous fit, you may forget them if they're in your head. Write them down. Save yourself the angst of not knowing. Use pauses. A pause helps you get yourself together. To look and say, it's Monica, I'm from Washington DC, I like to travel, um, I definitely really want the job, just pause, exhale. Hi, I'm Monica Barnett, I'm from Washington DC, and I like to travel. I definitely am interested in this opportunity because of X, Y, and Z. Pauses use them, use your words. In a pinch, if you can't think of a pause, somebody asks you a question, it's great question. That's your pause. Take a moment, get yourself together. No one's expecting you to do rapid fire shootout. Pauses, this is the hard stuff you guys, but it counts. Mention something about yourself. Usually at the start of an interview, it's typically best. So as we're all getting ready, hi, how was everyone this weekend? Did everyone have a good weekend? I was away uh, camping this weekend or I went on a bike ride this weekend. I did social distancing in my backyard, but I did movie night in the backyard. It was enjoyable. I had a couple of friends that I've been social distancing with and we decided to do a meal together because I enjoy cooking. Think of some way to talk about or mention something about yourself. It's important because in this little screen and this little amount of time, guess what? They need to be able to differentiate you. So when you talk about authenticity, when you talk about engagement, when you talk about projecting personality on screen, this is how you're getting it. You're pausing. You're doing soft contact. You're engaging them and getting them to laugh or chuckle or pause for a moment. You're mentioning something about yourself that makes you a much more well-rounded person. Something so that at the end of the interview, somebody says, oh, you know what? she was great or he was awesome or it's so funny that you can't because I love to camp. It's offering up and thinking through what you think those points of connection may be. So type hard stuff for me if that makes sense. If it makes sense, type hard stuff. It's the hard stuff. I got a couple hard stuff. So, all right. Okay. Sounds weird when I just say type those words, but you get what I'm saying. Hard stuff. Okay. The devil is in the details and we're almost done here. This is it. Is everyone ready for the home stretch? Say yes if you're ready for the home stretch. Have a moment. Home stretch, yes. The devil is in the details, everybody. Turn on your fan low, put it directly on yourself. Again, you don't want the windstorm because you're not in a photo shoot, so you don't want all the but you definitely want a cool environment. I remind you of this. You will thank me later. Just email me and say thank you and I'll know what it's because of, okay? Steer clear of prints and busy, and busy tops. You have a teeny bit of real estate. And what I remind all of my clients, and as well I'm going to remind you all, is that 
with such little space, you don't have the opportunity to balance out a print with a dark bottom or printed pants with a light top. It's just this little bit of space and everyone is looking at this little bit of space. And if you stuff prints and busy tops in that little bit of space, it's disconcerting to the eye. So steer clear. Crest white strips before every interview. Again, avoid the strawberries, avoid the blueberries. Forget Doritos. Yes, Doritos. I know Doritos personally because I used to do that to my sister all the time. So forget Doritos. Crest white strips before every interview. If you sweat a lot, consider armpit pads. You can go right on Amazon. And again, depending how big your screen is, depending how much you're showing, your armpits can start to sweat a lot. This is big, you're interviewing. You don't know, this could be the biggest job that you've ever had. It can make you nervous and that's okay, you're human. Just find a way to allay and ameliorate what can be happening. All right, use a timer. So here's how I use my timer. I'm gonna show you my timer. I use the stopwatch function. So if you have an Apple, I'm certain Google has something similar, there's a stopwatch function. I use the stopwatch function and I create laps. So you'll see mine has laps and it says we're at about 45 minutes. It is my visual reminder that I either need to speed up or slow down. It's great for you all because it's your visual reminder that you either need to make sure that you mention X, Y, or Z, which is very important, or it's a note to say, my gosh, you're moving too fast, slow down, exhale, take a pause um, and engage, right? Because if you get through everything, you answer the questions and you're whipping through it and you're finding, oh my God, we're just at 1230 and it started at 12, what happened? Slow down, it's a great visual reminder. And it's great because it makes you seem prepared. When you hit that 50 minute mark for a 60 minute interview, it's an awesome opportunity for you to look good and say, you know, Jane, thanks. I'm gonna answer that question, but I wanna be respectful of everybody's time and remind you that we just have 10 minutes left. Um, so if there are questions that you have that we wanna make sure we get through, please let me know but it's a great reminder and it helps you stay on track. So use the reminder. It's the timer function, you know, the, yeah, it's the timer function or your clock function, right? Right up there, your clock function. And then within that, I use the stopwatch function. Again, so that I know my laps and it helps me. I do laps for each section so that I know what I'm getting through and if I'm on pace. All right. Use pauses to look away from the look to look away from the screen or camera. Um, again, think about that soft contact. You don't want to be looking in the screen with your eyes wide open, answering a question all the time because it looks weird. Soften it up, and you don't have to always engage with the screen. You can take a pause if it's looking down at your resume. If it is, you know, answering a question and you're thinking, I would say use that pause to say, hmm. I would say to you and then continue, but use your pauses to look away from the screen to make sure that, you know, you're blinking often enough. Again, you're in the middle of this. So tell me camera, type the word camera if you're with me. Camera, camera. No one's with me. I only have two cameras. Okay, I got a couple more cameras. Okay, good, all right, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, couple more things. Acknowledge interruptions. This is very important. If you have a dog that's running around, if you have a kid, if you have a roommate, I will acknowledge to you that when I do these, there are sometimes an ambulance that goes by. You can't talk above the ambulance that goes by. Um, people know that you're at home, acknowledge it. It's much easier to acknowledge the dog running in the room than to say, oh, hi, hold on a second, forget this. What are you doing? 
just acknowledge, hey, my dog is running away with my phone. If you can hold on a second, I'll run and grab it. So acknowledge interruptions. It will look much more authentic and genuine than you trying to freak out and uh, not share that with the people that are across your screen. I leave this last one because somebody had a question when we did the survey of if I have to do an in-person interview, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I can't shake hands. What do I do? Very easy. I tell you to do an elbow tap or to do the prayer hands, which is high. Everyone knows we're in the middle of a pandemic. No one's holding it against you when you don't reach out and shake it. Just, hi, how are you doing? And again, it creates a light moment or it's, hi, how are you doing? Very nice to meet you. Does that make sense? And with that, I feel like I have just about seven minutes left, which means I'm gonna leave you with all this good stuff, which is the way to contact me, which is information to get the newsletter and it's information to get the guides and style info by hitting the blog at your leisure and say that I am done and open it up to questions. So questions, let's see, I'm gonna open up the Q and A. Are there, is there literally not one Q and A? I'm gonna pause for a second and ask you all in the question. Great, I should see at least three or four questions popping up in the Q&A because at the very beginning when I asked if we're going to cover all, most, or some, most of you said some. So stay with me, but ask your question, except Valera, if you're driving, please don't. So let's check and see. Did Valera's question get answered? And I, I feel it, that it did, but maybe you have more to add, Monica. She had asked, how do you stand out from other applicants because Zoom fatigue, fatigue makes everyone blend together. Right, so, you know, Zoom fatigue is real. <laughs> if it's not one thing, it's another. I will tell you that the easiest way to stand out um, and the easiest way to be different is to be yourself. Because first of all, there's only one of you. And if you can convey you on the screen, that's the easiest thing to do. The best way to do that is to engage with the screen and engage with the people that are on the screen. So some of those intangibles and hard stuff, things that we talked about, which is soft eye contact, which is finding a way to inject a laugh or two, making sure that people, you mention something about yourself, making sure that you're pausing, and again, facial expressions are really the ways to stand out. What you don't wanna do is to get to an, the end of an interview, and having looked in the screen like this the entire time, barely cracking a smile, answering the question, and wiping off your brow every two minutes. Engage, be and en give not just professionalism and polish, but the key here is really finding ways to inject personality and a little bit of yourself into the interview. So I hope that answers the question. Um, I am going to wait patiently, but I'm absolutely okay, sure. One more, one more question. So yep. M is asking, do you recommend looking at the video of yourself while you're interviewing? Oh, so, you know, I am up in the air about that, to be honest. So I'll use myself as an example. Um, the short answer is yes, but only in doses. Uh, the little screen at the top is really where you want to be looking. Um, because from an eye contact perspective, that's what shows through. So I de definitely want to be looking at the screen or the little dot most of the time. But when you do the pause to the side, when you look to the side or down or wherever you have put your little screen, mine is actually to the right, um, it's an opportunity to pause. And I tell you to use that opportunity. So it's okay to occasionally look at yourself. And I do it because I wanna make sure, you know, I don't have lipstick on my teeth. I do it to make sure that, you know, I haven't messed with my hair and left a piece of hair sticking out looking crazy, right? Um, so I think an occasional peak is fine, but what you should not do is have a conversation with that picture because that means that you're not engaging and having eye contact um, with the actual people, 
if that helps you. So I'm gonna pause. I know there are gonna be more questions. I know. I actually have a quick follow-up question to the to MH's question about looking at yourself and you, you're mentioning looking at the camera, which makes great sense um, with some you know pauses and things. What if it is just a side-by-side -side you and one interviewer? Should you look at that interviewer or should you still look at the camera? It's look, you want to, if it's a side-by-side, -side, it, what it is, so there's the technology of it, to be very honest, is simply that there are gonna be pictures, there may be two pictures showing up on the screen to indicate and to make you think that it's more of a conversation, and I think that's very good. But at the end of the day, what is showing up on that screen for you is what you are doing looking at the camera. So the end result is you need to look at the camera to engage with your crowd or to engage with that person, even if it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Now, the upside is if it's just two people and you can put the two big people like right screen side by side, really big on your screen, it's easier because even as you're looking at the screen just right here, um, it's fun because it looks like you're looking at the camera. So it'll feel a little more conversational. Um, so. Got it. Thank you. We had another question that came through and yep. it is from Dennis Schwartz and Dennis is asking, do you use headphones with or without cords at all or only the computer audio? Okay. That was a stacked question. So thank you, Dennis. And the answer is I don't use cords at all and I don't use headphones um, because they tend to offer me one more point of distraction. Um, if you can imagine, I don't even have headphones here with me, but uh, yeah, I don't even have headphones with me, but something on my ears here um, looks funny to me. Um, and it may get me to focus on what it is you're saying, but it also kind of drowns out the natural kind of noise in the back, which frankly is okay. At the end of the day, your interviewer knows that this is a pandemic. Your interviewer knows that you are in a natural environment, whether that's at home, whether that's in an apartment, whether that's in your dorm room. Um, less you being at a coffee shop or in the middle of a mall, which is an inappropriate place to be doing an interview, um, it is okay to have a little bit of natural noise um, in the background. Again, just acknowledge any interruptions and keep it moving. Chords, the other reason I don't like chords is as someone who is perhaps maybe not always the most coordinated, I can imagine going for my water, it's on the cord, it trips, the water goes somewhere, it ends up somewhere, oh, and that's a whole big snafu that I can just avoid. Like, the least amount of stuff possible to get me to focus, to me, is the right answer. So my, to answer your question, I would say I would opt to not use headphones and to use the computer audio but if you needed headphones, I would say find ones without the cord, like, you know, the little AirPods or something, which still look a little funny to me because if you don't put them in right, you know. Um, but I hope that answers your question. You're welcome, Michaela. Michaela. I think it's Michaela. Um, I'm going to pause. There's no more questions. We covered makeup and grooming. We covered your virtual interviewing needs. We covered some of the intangibles around projecting confidence and authenticity. I gave you all a few more resources. We covered your clothing must-haves, absolutely, to conduct an interview. Very rarely for any interview will you ever have to be suited and booted um, with a full suit on with a tie um, at this juncture, even for the most formal of law firms. Um, and again, I work with some of the most formal law firms in the DC um, inside the Beltway. And even for those, a suit jacket with a collared shirt, button down shirt is usually enough. 
because at the end of the day, you're at home and no one's expecting you to be full on suited and booted, um, but still looking professional and polished. I mean, coming across like you care is important. Other questions? You're telling me there's no questions. That means I did a... Monica, I've got one for you. Yes. So ordinarily, um, you know, we'd recommend getting there a few minutes early because you're going to go into the lobby and you're, they're going to have you wait. They're going to get you your water. But now it's Zoom. And to, what do you recommend in terms of logging in early? How early? Um, and then tips, obviously, so that students aren't like you know, doing this or getting distracted by things? Uh, my recommendation is to not log in really more than five, really more than about five minutes before, um, maybe 10 if you think you're gonna have issues. So a couple of things I remind people of um, when we talk about logging in. Number one, turn off your phone and don't have to actually turn it off, but turn the ringer off and make sure it's somewhere so that even if it's vibrating, you're not hearing it. That's number one. Number two, I would tell you to shut down your other programs on your phone, on your laptop or your, um, or your computer. The third thing I would remind you of is the five minute rule is in place simply because it gives you an opportunity to get in, get situated, and move around. What you don't want to do is to log in and then be like, okay, well, I got 10 minutes, let me go leave. Um, and then what happens when you come back is you have your interviewer or three interviewers sitting looking at a blank screen of you, right? Eh, not really where you want to be. Um, so five minutes, get yourself there, prepare, exhale, line up everything like I line up my water all the way all the way off to the side away from my laptop again I'm clumsy I line up my cords I get everything straight so that I'm avoiding stuff my phone I do my timer I make sure I've got everything going on my laptop the right way so I would tell you really the short answer net net I know that was long-winded but I'd say five maximum ten there's just, you want to be prepared, but you don't want to be there just twiddling your thumbs. Like, oh, I got 10 minutes. What's going on here? I don't know. Okay, cool. I don't know. Let's check. And then somebody logs in. You're like, oh, hi. My fault. Like, stay on your P's and Q's. Five minutes. Stay on your P's and Q's. Get it together. Great. Right. So it looks like we are running a little, you know, a little over time. And so this was fantastic. I want to thank you on behalf of our students and our career development office. Um, if students do have questions that come up after this is being recorded, can we direct them to you? Absolutely. I would tell you via the last page, mm -hmm. you can contact me via email. Even if you go on the blog at some way, there's a contact button somewhere there. Yep. The newsletter at the bottom of that, if you were to sign up, there's a way to contact me there. Tons of ways to get to me. Worst case scenario, they can, you can reach out to Keith, you can reach out to Laura, you can reach out to Mary Beth, and they can forward your email, your information, or vice versa. So I'd say thank you, and you absolutely feel free to reach out as questions pop up. Thank you. With a prayer hand. Thank you. <laughs> prayer hands. I like you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> bye bye. Right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for engaging and listening. <laughs>